Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go! Do you have absolute certainty on how you go from hello to yes on what you're looking for? Sean is a master. He teaches. It's not just about sharing the formula with you. It's about making sure that we learn. I went from $100,000 in debt from law school to having no money and starting my own law firm on my credit card to selling it four years later. Sean and I, we co-created massive victories in two unwinnable jury trials, which are recognized nationally now as top 100 jury verdicts. To be even on the same track with you, who I respect and admire and love with all my heart. Never again submit. You're not better and you're not less than any human on earth. When you share with us about the unblinded process and the, the mastery sales training, I just went, wow. Sean will gain proximity to the most influential and powerful people. He will find out how he can grow their business, how he can help them personally. But the third thing that he does is the most important. Sean serves without an expectation of getting anything in return. You have very, very high performing colleagues. 22 years ago, you transformed my life as you did all these people's lives over the course of time. And I couldn't be more great. Let's hear from Tony Robbins. I don't see him as a lawyer, and I don't see him as a blind person. Someone who has subjugated his ego, who has taught me what serving really looks like. You have this incredible ability to just have unconditional love for everyone, and that is just an incredible gift. The moment you have been waiting for. Uh, the American Blind Association is the first new face and voice of that association since Helen Keller. Formula bought formulas, which is exactly what I've learned from Sean. It's a language-based predictable model. We will have over 300 new sales meetings this month. This superpower in the world that is attainable for you is the ability to influence people. If you believe that, say yes. If you believe that, say yes. Do you think that worked? <laughs> What is going on, everyone? Happy Why Wednesday, and welcome to the Heart of Influence. A big thank you to Quintus McDonald, of course, Gene Good for assembling, and Rebecca Williams for putting together an extraordinary group of people. Some of us uh, have an idea why we're here. Some of us might have absolutely no idea why we're here. But at the end of the day, there's a few things that bring us together. We're here together because in some way, shape, or form, we're looking for either more money, more time or more magic. And the reason why Quintus, Gene, and Rebecca have put us all together is because the greatest piece of value you can give a stranger you don't know is a platform, a stage, and a microphone to talk about what matters to them and their business and make it fun, ridiculous, and exciting. And we're here to have a little fun with the superpower of influence. But first, Brother Quintus, how are you? Who do we got going on here? And how are you feeling on this Why Wednesday, brother? Hey, Brother Fernando, um, man, this is awesome. Uh, great to see you again. We've been, you know, touching base, touch points throughout the day. Uh, I'm doing fantastic. Uh, I'm super excited about this group of people that we have here. Um, you know, to be able to assemble individuals who created history, mm -hmm. true history at a point in time, back in a room together in an effort to accelerate themselves and their business still and our mantra at Penn State we were we were all about excellence uh and to see men that that I went to battle with still reaching for excellence at this stage of life and to be able to bring the two together that scored the last seven points that created the the memorable uh poetic ending of that national championship game that night in the desert, 1987. So we've got DJ Dozier scored the touchdown, Massimo Manka kicked the extra point. Oh, great. And yeah, and, 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 and so that in, in and of itself, I'm super excited. Obviously we've got another Penn State Nittany Lion, Mr. Dan Mayo, who I wouldn't go near wrestling mat with him still today. You know, <laughs> he, he, he'll put something on you. A super <laughs> duper uh, great guy, Penn State grad. Then we've got my partner, um, a mentor to me, uh, Mr. Daryl McKenzie, someone who has been a friend, a brother in Christ, um, a sounding board, uh, a chopping block, a, a correction rod, uh, just been so many All things. All the above. 
all the football <laughs> over over the past two years. You know, we and Daryl and I came together in the midst of the pandemic, trying to help people, searching for a way to get nitrile gloves into the hands of people who were on our front lines. Wow. And wow. and that's how he and I came together. Don't even know how our paths crossed, but we met at the heart and we've been together ever since uh, doing some great things in the world. So um, there you have it. Those are, those are my guys. It is always a privilege uh, to be around uh, the ecosystems you assemble. And for everyone, let's just be clear, uh, this is a cup of coffee we plan to have together. Uh, most of us understand that businesses are built on relationships and relationships are built on shared experiences. The fact that you scored the last seven points, the touchdown and the field goal is a shared experience you cherish forever. Now, this might not be as exciting and adrenaline filled, but it's not your grandpappy's BNI. So it's better than that, at least. And it's better than coffee and dinner and all those other things, because we're all here and we're looking to have some fun and get to know each other. I'm going to come back to Gene and Rebecca in a moment. Craig, you have some introductions. Who are we introducing first? What's up, Fernando? So first off, we have do have some extraordinary people as our first contestant participant. We have from Bowie, Maryland. This man is a dynamic multi-brand and multi-unit hotel manager and team leader. More than two decades of experience in hotel, motel management and operations, achieved revenues in excess of $20 million and consistently achieved and exceeded gross operating profit margins of 65% or more, Mr. Wow. Allen Davis. Let's give it up to Allen. Wow. Alan, uh, that is uh, such a small list of accomplishments you have there, my friend. I'm just Not kidding. Sure. So, Alan, what, what is outside of some incredible business uh, success? What is a fun fact in 15 seconds? What is a fun fact about Alan? Wow. Uh, first, I want to apologize because I'm having some technical difficulties, is, which is why I'm not on screen. So I apologize in advance for that, but I'm working on it. You got it. But a, a, a fun fact for me is, um, wow, I just I just like to have fun. <laughs> I mean, that's just a real fun fact. And I think people uh, feed off of that energy because you negative you negatively or positively affect people just by the way you walk in the room. Mm. Well, Alan, uh, dropping bombs, speaking truth. And uh, so like, is your version of fun? Do you like to cook in your underwear? Do you ski? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, I'm a cyclist, so I, I do like to ride. Uh, uh, and um, I, I love a, a good game of chess. Wow. All right, so I will not get on the mat with Dan. <laughs> I will not get on the chessboard with Alan. <laughs> Got it, loud and clear. Alan, thank you for being here. And something tells me if I had to guess, and I don't guess that often, that Rebecca Williams might've had a little something, something in having you here. Rebecca, I couldn't be any more grateful to partner with you, what you're doing in the world of real estate, real estate investments, uh, the leader and speaker that you are and how you assemble these audiences on a regular basis is truly a superpower because the hardest thing to do in business is to gather an audience of incredible people. And that's what's happening. So Alan, thank you. Craig, who's next? My level five listing is we shouldn't be in the kitchen while Fernando could be cooking in his underwear. Let's go to the next contestant or participant coming from Quintus McDonald in Morristown, New Jersey. We have a person who is a health and wellness fanatic, kind of, and a runner. He is growing sales, building strategic partnerships, network and representation at the highest level over 15 years of sales and business development experience on a national level. And recently, success on a global level, we have Dan Mayo. Wow. Let's give it up to Mr. Mayo. Thank you, guys. Fun energy in my life. I have a gentleman called Paul Crisquolo, and we endearingly call him the mayor. But the mayor's actually your last name. So outside of that, what's a fun fact about you, Dan? How are you? A fun fact. Um, well, I love cooking. So I actually took a part-time job recently. It's at a high-end Italian cooking school wow. to teach people how to cook. So um, so I'm learning. I It's something I love doing. And um, so that's a fun fact. But here, I'm an avid runner. So one fact about me, which is actually sick, but it's fun. Penn State football, I kind of follow them. And every Saturday, depending on who they play, 
I think if I run a certain amount of miles, it's going to help James Franklin make better decisions. <laughs> it hasn't. So like if they're playing Maryland, I'll say, or I'm going to run 10 miles today because I actually think it's helping the team out. Brother, it is. It but is. Ohio State now is a different picture. I'm at like 21 miles now and it's not helping. But I feel I did my part and I will continue. I just do it. And um, um, I, you know what? I, if I could help out my alma mater and I, I'm going to do it. And um, whether it's helping or not, I don't know. But I feel good about it. Well, Dan, so. I'm present to incredible levels of self mastery, as we would call it in you, years later to be this dedicated. And listen, whether it's an energy, spirit, whatever, there's no way it's not helping. Uh, and I would gamble that it is. So Dan, thank you for being here. Craig. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, you met last week, also on the heart of influence from Virginia Beats Virginia, a CEO helping small sports tech companies enter and or expand into the sports industry, board position consulting multiple businesses, one being a venture capital firm focused on minority com companies and ventures, uh, passionate about inspiring these businesses to meet ideal avatars and create the yes they're seeking in the world from Quintus McDonald, his friend and partner, DJ Dozier. So uh, I have the privilege to hang out with you, DJ, and let's uh, let's see if we can put my fun skills to the test two weeks in a row. Uh, what brings you here a second time, my friend? And what's a fun fact about you? Well, I had to uh, take the lead, and, and when I had a conversation, and so he thought it was necessary and beneficial for me to join a second time, and so here I am. In terms of a fun fact, boy, I, they, uh, um, I hate to use the one I didn't last week but um let me see here fun fact well i guess Mets. the fun fact is the Mets. well i'll go with Mets. the next maybe maybe the third time to join us but uh so fun fact is uh who would have ever guessed that you know the small town of state college which is where penn state is uh, that's where my wife and all my kids were born Penn State College. Wow. Like, in, like, Penn, like Penn State College? All of them? All of them. Wow. Uh, well, DJ, that is a super fun fact. And I think we're all curious on what your third fun fact is going to be. But we'll <laughs> save that for the next time. Craig. Oakland, California, a community development professional with almost 20 years experience, represents the needs of individuals, investors, nonprofit organizations, and businesses focused on community, economic development, sustainable energy and policy, and more for underserved communities, a friend and partner of Rebecca Williams, Aaron Clay. Aaron, thank you for joining us. And if you could join us on camera, that'd be phenomenal. Uh, is there a fun fact uh, about you, Aaron, that you would like to share with us today? A fun fact, you know, um, you asked me to think of that and I was like, I don't know if any fun facts, but I was youth mayor for the city of Oakland uh, as a senior in uh, high cool. school. So um, I thought that was going to be bigger than what it actually was, a little bit honorary. They actually wouldn't let me make some laws like I wanted to, but um, so be it. It was still fun. Well, it sounds like it was the beginning uh, of a lot of leadership in your future, my friend. Grateful to be sharing this space with you. And thank you, Rebecca, for uh, having Aaron join us. Craig, who we got next? Another friend and partner of Quintus McDonald from Jacksonville, Florida, 20 plus years in imaging technology, retired in 2013. He is an ecosystem maven and a traveling grandfather, now impacting the world and future through energy efficiency, outstanding, outstanding relationship creation, Mr. Daryl McKenzie. So, uh, Daryl, as a traveling grandfather, do you just like carry them on your back or what does that mean? And what's a fun fact about you, Daryl? No, I'm not carrying them on my back, uh, Fernando, but I'm just doing a little traveling right now. <clears throat> fun fact would be my favorite people call me Papa. Well, uh, I will continue to call you Daryl. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> you earn some love and some trust, and I will call you Papa too. So, Daryl, uh, I love your energy. 
thank you for being here. And uh, the, the leader that Quintus is, to hear him acknowledge you in that way brought a warmth in my heart as uh, Quintus is an incredible man of men, uh, of Christ for sure. And for him to uh, call you a mentor says a lot to me. And I'm looking forward to learning from you as well, Daryl. So thank you so much well, for being here. Craig. Thank you for having me. Someone I just met last week from Cedarhurst to New York, his family owning seats on the New York Mercantile Exchange known as its NYMEX, transitioned from commodities to real estate when it went public and created liquid asset opportunities. Realizing so many people doing syndication, he opened up a liquidity business, allowing people to get out of their limited partnerships before the maturity of the deal. In under a year, he's put together 15 deals, totaling mm. roughly $3 million, Mr. Leon Mayer. So it looks like it's going to be the battle of the mayors, um, but it may, it may not uh, pan out that way. But if I had it my way, I think that's what it would be. Leon, it sounds uh, so unique and precise what you do. Grateful to have you here and getting to learn about you. What's a fun fact about Leon? Uh, I'm a huge football fan. This is a mega opportunity for me, you know, just to be here with uh, you know, all these pros. I, I, I'm a big Cowboys fan. I'm initiating my boys into becoming Cowboys fans. Um, you know, I don't know. I love the sport and I love everything about it. Uh, well, Leon, we feel the joy and uh, we are just as grateful to meet you as clearly there's a lot of athletes that could use your support um, and there's a lot of uh, others that can use your support. And we're here to get to know each other and build relationships in a fun, magical and organic way. So Leon, thank you. Craig B, who's our next up? What's going on? And yet another connection from Quintus McDonald from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He has 20 years in sale with five with Novartis Pharmaceuticals, had cardiology experience with another company and was brought in to be part of their cardiac sales force. He spends his time speaking to and working with cardiology offices and practitioners to utilize the products he stands behind. We have Massimo Menka. Massimo is a man of integrity who is pulling off the road in his car, committed. That's right. Being part of his <laughs> commitment. That's who I see on the screen right now. So, Maximo, you are a man of integrity, sir. Thank you for joining us. And what's a fun fact about you? Nice to meet you, Fernando. Great to see Quintus and DJ and Dan Mayo. It's probably been 30 years since I've seen Dan. So, great to see everybody. Uh, fun fact about me, I. Uh, Long way to get to Philadelphia. I was born on, on an island in Italy called Sardinia. Went to high school in Reno, Nevada. Went to college at Penn State. Met my wife there. And she's from the Philly area. That's why I'm here now. Great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Grateful to have you here, Maximo. And an incredible career that you've created. And Quintus, as you can see, the power of shared experiences. Even teammates need a little container to reconnect. And that's what we're doing here amongst many other things. Craig. Who's next? Well, now we have our three partners that brought some of these, most of these extraordinary individuals together. We will start it off with Rebecca Williams in Washington, DC. She has 19 years in sales, formerly in the medical field for top companies like GE, Draeger, and Massimo, and now in real estate amongst the top producing realtors in DC, Maryland, and Virginia every year since 2017 with over $40 million in sales. Now stepping into the hotel world, selling, investing, and building a portfolio of ownership, Miss Rebecca Williams. Mm -hmm. Rebecca, shared experiences can actually be fun. Look at us here. Look at what you've done. Rebecca, thank you for the assembly of this great audience with Quintus and Jean. What is a fun fact about you, Rebecca? Um, I will, first of all, thank you. And I would say a fun fact is that I have completed over 30 triathlons. Wait, like, like three zero or three? No, like three zero. Yes. All right. Uh, all the sports fans are like, man, I got to get back, you know, uh, at the gym. Rebecca Williams dropping the mic. That was an unexpected fun fact. I had no idea, Rebecca. Clearly, there's a lot more to learn uh, behind the, this incredible woman I've gotten to know. And thank you for being here. Craig, who's our next partner? Our next partner is Miss Jean Good, heart centered, super dedicated financial advisor, spent 20 years working in the horse in the horse business. 
helping build people, helping people build the lives they dream of. 14 years helping hundreds of people make their dreams come true. Miss Jean Good. Jean Good, uh, grateful to see you in this level of frequency. And what is a fun fact about Jean? Uh, my fun fact is that I grew up in Rochester, New York. I'm a Bills fan, which is only more heartbreaking than being a Jets fan. And um, this will date me, but um, I probably was watching Heidi. Uh, Does that is, that joke besides me? Uh, I, I am the running joke of Unblinded and my lack of pop culture. So I apologize uh, for failing to catch that reference. But yes. Right, so in, in 1968, the Oakland Raiders were getting hammered by the Jets and they cut out the last two minutes of the game to sh run the movie of Heidi. And the Raiders came back and won the game. Oh my God. And football plan fans all over the world remember this as a day of infamy. Well, it definitely sounds like the a day. Aaron of definitely remembers it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. And Craig, we finalize uh, with the champion of today's assembly of the audience, Mr. Quintus McDonald. Back to you. From Raleigh, North Carolina, a four-year letterman and sixth-round draft pick to the Indianapolis Colts, numerous defensive player of the Game Awards and the Ed Block Courage Award awarded for uncommon courage in res and resolve in returning from injury, a heart-centered entrepreneur looking to impact the world on an individual, communal, and global level in personal, family, and health dynamics, as well as environmental and financial foundations, Mr. Quintus McDonald. If you could please share with us, I'm going to pivot my, my question to you, Atad, in 30 seconds, because I know this answer is much longer than that. Why do you care to bring such incredible people together day in and day out as the most undervalued, uh, most sought after partner in business, whether someone understands it or not, is the partner, the teammate that could assemble an incredible audience. And you have dedicated yourself with I Am Recycling merging ecosystems with unblinded gene and so many to bring these shared experiences together. Why does this matter to you? And what say you on that, Mr. Quintus? Great, great question. Um, thank you, Fernando. Uh, you know, I believe with all of my heart that, that to whom much is given, much is required. And, and I've been given access to people that don't have access to other people that should have access because I see things. So just having vision beyond my retina and being able to see things from a kingdom perspective, there is no lack. All, all it is is a need to connect. The Everything that we need is here in the earth. When we become connectors and bring these things together, when we get the vision and bring them together, Man, we make the world a better place, a greater place. That's how the kingdom is realized here in earth. Oh, my brother could not have said it any better myself. And before we kick it into the game and have some fun, who the heck am I? Uh, I am privileged to have an incredible family that migrated from Colombia in 1986, born in a low income neighborhood with a deep desire to keep my parents from divorcing, made the decision to make money my priority. Uh, got my first unofficial job at 13 and officially uh, built my first million dollar business before the age of 21. I've had several exits since, and I realized a, a couple moons ago that there was a power in becoming a super connector as you bring the worlds of accounting, legal, financial, celebrity, and athlete together. That creates incredible potential to develop a relationship and business. And in the last 17 years, I've single-handedly co-produced, spoken, put together, uh, hosted over 5,000 events from 50,000 people all the way to five in service of the outcome Quintus just so beautifully uh, articulated. And that's what we're doing here. We're here to practice the superpower of influence. So Craig, correct me if I'm wrong, our two participants today are Alan and Dan. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. So Alan, Dan, here's going to be the name of the game, brothers. Uh, we're going to give you three minutes to have a role play, a conversation with Craig about a yes you're seeking in the world. And Craig could be whomever you want. 
He can be a business owner. He could be someone looking to donate money. I'm going to donate to a charity, someone that you want to hire you to speak uh, on their stage. And you're going to have three minutes to have a natural, organic conversation with them as you go from hello to yes. And that yes could be another phone call, another meeting, or something else. And then our judges, which I will be assigning as we go, your responsibility is going to be to listen and to share some feedback to help our friends, Dan and Alan, continue to rise in their mastery, share what you enjoyed about their conversation, and hopefully build some relationships, all follow up with each other after today's conversation. So Dan, I've got a question for you. I have a one or a two under the table. What do you choose? You have a one or two under the table. What do I choose? I'm going to choose one. Brother, it is a two. So Alan, you have won the coin toss and you get to choose. Would you like to go first or would you like to kick the ball and have our leader and begin the game? Oh, wow. Uh, I'll go first. Ooh, I like you. The percentage of people that do that is so small. All of us just said, wow, Alan's a really interesting guy. So Alan, here's the question, brother. Who would you like Craig B to be? And what is the yes you're seeking from him? Oh, wow. Let's see. I would like Craig to be, um, I would like him to be Chris Nassetta, the CEO of Hilton Hotels. And um, I want his yes to be to um, invest in me or my team developing um, some hotels in particular areas and just looking to get the financing. Okay. So Craig, any questions on that? Craig? <clears throat> uh, no, let's go in. All right, beautiful. So Aaron, Massimo and Quintus, you're gonna be our judges for this conversation with Alan. So please keep your listening open, your notebooks open, uh, whatever works for you. We're gonna kick it off. Alan, you're gonna call Craig in three seconds. Three, two, one, go. Hello, Craig. Yes. Hi, Alan Davis. I'm Hi. With a hey, uh, Craig, I'm with a company called Wintergreen Hospitality. And we are a small uh, group and uh, we are a minority group and we are looking to develop um, a hotel here in the Washington DC area and also uh, Prince George's County. Um, mm -hmm. We're looking to better understand is there any uh, minority uh, funding um, for this project. Uh, well, Alan, thank you for calling. Uh, I definitely appreciate working with minority groups. Um, there, it allows for a lot of open conversations with a lot of different people. Just so you know, I have about only about two minutes till my next call, um, and there is some funding. What is it that you're looking to do? So right now, we're looking at. Um, two brands, uh, a home, two suites, and also a true, which um, I know they're up and coming. And we would love to get one of those brands in a urban market. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be Washington, DC, but we're looking at maybe getting a feasibility study done, whether it's either in um, Atlanta, Georgia, Washington, DC, it can even be in Chicago. Sounds like a great opportunity. And what are you looking for from me specifically? So right now I am uh, seeking some investors right now. We're looking and putting together um, some funds and I just looking to find out what number that Hilton will, will offer. Mm -hmm. uh well, there's definitely different possibilities. Can I ask what is it about those areas that are so important to you? Well, Washington DC is definitely obviously a, a big government driven and also group uh, uh, group driven industry with the convention center right there. So 
um, between group uh, conventions and government, I think is a, just a great recipe for success. Uh, I definitely hear that, especially in the uh, in the minority group space. Um, can again open up a lot of conversations. Uh, maybe we can set up a meeting. You can give my assistants a call. We could set up a meeting for next week. Outstanding. I, I look forward to it. I will shoot you some dates, or you feel free to shoot me some dates that's available. Amazing. Thank you so much, Alan. Alan, great Thank job, you. right on the buzzer. Uh, you can't even see the clock and you hit the buzzer. So kudos to you, my friend, to take something to go first. And now let's hear from our judges. Judges, we're gonna be giving you 30 seconds and we want you to share in this format. Here's what you enjoyed. Here's a potential area of growth and then a score from one to 10. So Massimo, you're gonna begin. Please, your thoughts. Alan, I, I, I appreciate the way you didn't, panic, even though he told you that you, he only had a couple of minutes. Um, and, you know, I, I go through that every day in, in my work, whereas, you know, um, I, I'm in front of a doctor and they'll say, I can't talk right now. But I, you were still able to engage him, obviously, because it was something of interest to him. And I just liked your pace. You didn't rush through it. You didn't try to speed it up when he told you that uh, he only had two minutes. I, I thought it was great. And at the end, you got that commitment for a future appointment, which is very important. I liked your style. Any, any you. area of growth, if any, and a score from one to 10? Um, I could really, on the spot here, I can't think of a, an area of growth, but uh, I'm going to give you a eight. All right, we got an eight on the board. Thank you for your candor, sir. Aaron, uh, your thoughts, what did you enjoy? What was an area of growth, if any, and a score from one to 10? Um, Alan, I think you did a, a great job. Um, I also like the pace. You know, it was, I don't want to say slow, but it was at a pace good enough where you wanted to listen to make sure you understood, uh, not too fast. Um, a couple comments. Uh, I, I, I never really like it when somebody says I'm a small company um, because in today's world of social media, you can be a big company. Your image can be a big company and you're trying to be big. So. And I think uh, saying you're a small company, sometimes, especially starting out, uh, gives people a certain perception of your capability. So uh, as far as suggesting, I would just leave out, you know, I'm a company doing this. And also with the minority funding, um, you know, a little bit more about the benefits of participating with a, and I would have, you know, a certified minority company, say you're certified. Um, so he knows that you're really a minority company because minority can mean so many different things. So, um, but overall, I thought it was it was very good. And I also actually wrote down an eight. Great job, Aaron, and a just phenomenal display of listening. And for everyone, um, just to not miss this magic, every day and every way when we speak, whether we want to accept it or not, it's not about being judged. We're being assessed by the way we communicate, we influence. And this is a visual representation because Massimo and Aaron heard different things and no one's right, no one's wrong. Everyone's entitled to their opinion and that's what's happening in the world of influence. So uh, Quintus, uh, your thoughts, brother, uh, things you enjoyed, area of growth and a score from one to 10. Okay, I, I absolutely enjoyed take, take, taking the initiative to uh, go first when after winning the coin toss. Um, the, the certainty that was displayed in your pace and your cadence, that to me was a display of certainty. Um, a level, a, a place of optimization would be to uh, ask questions. You're certain about what it is that, that you present as a minority group and, and, and all of the things that you bring to the table. But I suggest that you ask questions um, to find out what it is they're looking for. And that way you can present it because you know that you have it and you're you're certain in that. So a score from, from one to 10, I'd give you a seven. Got two eights and a seven. And as I do my calculations on the screen here, let's bring up one more judge to even it out. Gene, we're gonna kick it over to you. Uh, what were some things you enjoyed, an area of growth and a score from one to 10? Thanks, Fernando, and thank you, Alan. Yes, going first is um, a leap of faith. And uh, like the others, I liked your 
tone, your cadence, um, you didn't talk too quickly. You're talking to a CEO. So, you know, lots of bubbliness and rapid talking would have been off-putting. Um, and I would also agree with Quintus that some question would have accelerated the speed with, you know, your ability to build a relationship and get the yes. And while the goal of the conversation is to get funding, we know that in three minutes, you're not going to get the CEO of Hilton to do that. And so the yes you're seeking in three minutes is the opportunity to talk again. And that takes, the, which you got, which was great, and might have built an area for optimization is to build a foundation for learning how you can serve him and support his work through the great work that you do. But I would give you also an eight. We got eights and sevens across the board. Thank you, Gene. And for everyone, as Massimo said, I'm not really sure on the spot how to add words for growth and improvement. Um, we at Unblinded, we talk about a formula. And what Alan did incredibly well is he was congruent. Uh, what he could have risen in, as everyone shared, is this question mastery. He could have built rapport, discovered little pain on what influence wanted. And to Aaron's point, he could have conveyed his identity just a little tighter. And to Gene's point, there's only so much you can do in three minutes. And that's the point, because sometimes that's all we have. Uh, so Alan, incredible job. Going to come back to you at the end to hear some thoughts. And thank you uh, for being brave enough to go first. I honor and respect that, my friend. So now, Dan, you're up, brother. And I'm you've ready. got a, a little home field advantage. You got to see what, what the game is cooking. So same questions for you, friend. Who would you like Craig to be? And what is the yes you're seeking from him? I'd like Craig to be a, an experienced successful business owner that has a, a relatively young company that is looking for maybe some strategic, some direction on financial hurdles, uh, strategic partnership hurdles, uh, trying to grow their brand and, and then and raise money. So something to that effect doesn't matter what industry, let's say, um, but we'll go health and wellness industry. It, it doesn't matter. Health and wellness it is. DJ, Daryl, Leon, Rebecca, you're going to be our judges uh, for Mr. Dan. So please have your listening present and available. And Dan, you're going to call Craig in three, two, one, go. Hello, Craig. Dan. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for taking time to to give me a few minutes here. I uh, since I only have three minutes, I want to get to the get to the uh, the point here. Um, as as you know, I'm calling you. Uh, you. You have that. You have your startup company called Craig's Company, and um, I want you. I'm with the Blue White Group, but I've also three years ago I partnered with DJ Dozer, who I believe is part of this call. And what we look to do is take companies like yours, we hear your story, and we believe whether it's financial, strategically, mental, whatever it may be, DJ and I can find a solution to help you in reaching your goals. Um, I need to hear a little bit about what you're looking to do, and we will put a plan together to help you reach your goal. So why don't you tell me a little bit about what you're looking to do with that, that startup company and, and um, we'll take it from there. So I appreciate it, Dan, thank you. And yes, um, I have been looking, watching the company grow, watching sales grow, uh, seeing our brands and our name get out into the public eye. I guess it comes down to I would always be looking to find out how we could pop, uh, pump in more financial assistance backing to the company um, and obviously always looking for the optimal relationships that can put us in front of more of the people we want to talk to. That's totally understand. And the way we operate, I'm not, I'm not someone that will call up a, a contact and, and say, hey, this guy's going to give you $2 million. But what we try to do with our network that is so healthy and robust worldwide, 
What what I want you to know is I we have we we work with we partner with Tom Whitman, recently retired as the president of NASDAQ. His his brother was my college teammate. I got to know Tom, who has been a blessing in disguise. Um, so that is somebody that that I I that's somebody I I can set you up with. You could share your story. I will know your story by then. And what I'd like to let him do is give his advice. What would he do? He may say, I want to fund it. He may say, I, I may not want to fund it. But what I do know he's going to do, he's going to introduce you to five more people that you will have in your Rolodex for the rest of your business career that can help make it. They will make a difference in your career in a positive way. Listen, you're telling me I can have a conversation with the former CEO of NASDAQ? I am in. Let's go. Yeah, so that's something. But let's but set that up next week. That financial, what I'd like you to do is think of other areas. Of, I don't like calling call them. Listen, areas I, of Dan, weakness. I have to go. I have to go to the next call, but 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 let's Yo. set up a time next week when we can talk we will, and we'll set something up. We will do that. I will be in touch. We'll get this done. Thank you very much. Wow. Awesome, Dan. Thank you. Uh, I know about all of y'all, but I'm definitely going to have a follow-up conversation with my boy, Dan, here. Great <laughs> no, job. I actually want to have one with everyone on this call because I think we can help everyone. Because Dan is no dummy, that's around. why. Uh, Dan is a smart <laughs> man. He knows what he's yeah. doing. So yeah. let's hear from our judges. So let's go. Daryl, uh, what say you, my friend? What are some things you enjoyed? Maybe an area of growth and a score from 1 to 10. Well, I think Dan started out, he made some statements about what he was looking to do. He obviously asked some questions. Um, then he came back around to make some additional statements. But I think one of the things after he had, you know, inquired is go for the close because he only had a certain amount of time. Um, but for the most part, I think he did a great job and I would give him a score of seven. Got a seven on the board. I was not present how DJ and Dan are doing things together. So it's a, it's a little tough to have him assess his buddy here. But DJ, uh, what were some things you enjoyed about your friend here, an area of growth and a score from one to 10? So I, I enjoyed the fact that, that Dan, you know, in his first uh, sentence established the fact that the, the time limit. And so he, he respected, respected Craig's time. Uh, so I enjoyed that. I think it was set up uh, in terms of areas of growth. I'd say um, going back to the time, recognizing that he had he was he had gotten a guess, uh, but then he moved on beyond time limit. So recognizing that time and, and staying in that space uh, would be an area of growth. And my scores, um, I give him, I give him an eight. We have an eight on the board. And I, DJ, I want to acknowledge you. Because last time on the show, just like Alan, you had no idea you were going to be a participant. You went first also. Uh, so you, Quintus, you hang out with some pretty courageous dudes, I have to say. Uh, very admirable. And DJ, thank you for that feedback. Great job. Leon, what say you, brother? What did you enjoy? What would you optimize? And a score from 1 to 10. Uh, I like that um, he was to the point, but he wasn't pushy about it. Um, he immediately related to Craig. And he was also extremely confident when he uh, conveyed his message. In the end, if you don't have that, then you'll never get your point across anyway. Um, I don't really have any uh, any criticisms of it, but I'd give him an eight. Well, thank you, Leon. And Rebecca is our thank final you. assessor. Uh, yes, our final assessor of the day. Uh, what say you? Things you enjoyed, an area of growth, and a score from one to ten. Good job, Dan. I really enjoyed that. I liked, I too liked how you opened it up, appreciative of his time, because that opens listening. That makes somebody want to, to listen to you because you you know that you're you're recognizing that they don't have a lot of time. I like that you asked questions. Um, you appeared very certain and confident. Um, I like that you name dropped someone pretty high up at NASDAQ. Um, I would say that an uh, area of optimization would uh ask, ask for that next meeting and be mindful of his time after you gave some appreciation of it um, in the beginning. I'll give you an eight. And, and you know what? I want to thank you, but let me chime in. Uh -huh. I, and DJ knows, I talk too much. I talk a lot because I just talk. But you, you say name drop and a lot of times that's looked down on. DJ and I don't name drop. It's for real. 
that's why it's not, I'm not doing it to say, hey, I have this guy, because no one knows that guy, but we have it all over and it's, and we're proud of it because these relationships have been 20, 25 years. We've never abused anything. We don't ask for anything. So it's respect on both sides. And, but, but yeah, I did name drop actually. And so, listen, but you know, it, it worked. Um, Rebecca and her beautiful wisdom and the way we teach Thank that you, leveraging heroic, unique identity. She was saying that as a positive. No, because, I know she was. I know she was. But yeah, yeah, exactly. I know that. And I appreciate it. Yeah. Like me saying I'm partnered with Rebecca, Quintus and Jean makes me look pretty cool. I'd be lying if I didn't tell you the truth, just like you would be lying. If you didn't tell right. us the truth, no one might not know that name. But I guarantee you they know NASDAQ and that matters. There's a fine line between modesty and humility. And it's our responsibility to tell people the truth because if not, they're going to go to someone else who is not telling them the truth. And that is your fault for not saying the truth. So incredible job for name dropping because it was integrous, honest, and real. So now yeah. as we take this call home, I'm going to call in some veterans. I'm going to tag in Quintus and DJ as you've been here before. You know the drill. Um, we have put all you through a uh, unexpected experience. And just like Derek Jeter hits a baseball and Michael Jordan dunks a football, we practice our superpower of influence. And what I'm going to ask my brothers, Craig, Quintus, and DJ to do is to come up with any scenario that you would like myself to go from hello to yes with. And I can either replay Alan, I can replay Dan, or you all could make up whatever you like. Um, but I'm going to ask that you please take less than 15 seconds, Craig, Quintus, DJ, I'm going to walk away to not influence the group. And you tell me, what would you like me to go from hello to yes with in three minutes with whomever, uh, Craig, Quintus, DJ, please lead. So I just, you have something that's uh, up and coming in your peripheral that you want to push Fernando's buttons on. No, let's, I, I, what, I, want, I want DJ um, to, to build a scenario that's real, a real scenario with what some of the things that we've been talking about here over the past two weeks. Let that be the scenario, build a real scenario, let him go from hello to yes. Okay. DJ? Yes. Yeah, so how about? Go ahead. Yes. I was going to say inside of your venture capital business or inside of your the sports business that you're a part of, uh, the people that you work with, how about uh, Fernando is speaking to the head of a hedge fund company looking to get backing on a minority up and coming venture or business? Do you have one in mind that you can give him? Uh, if we remove the minority, uh, yes. So uh, okay. company, they, it's in the media space. They provide uh, data points and uh, information for companies that are either advertising agencies, sports brands or properties, or brands all looking or, or needing information from the sponsorship uh, industry. Got it. So DJ, if I'm hearing you correctly, um, I'm looking for funding from a private equity venture fund for a media company that I am looking to grow. Am I hearing you correctly? Correct. All right. That's all the data that I will take. And just in fun energy, because I want to, I'm in the mood to spice it up a little bit. We didn't do this last time. DJ, how about you also choose who you'd like my role player to be. So anyone on the screen, uh, they will be the person I will go from hello to yes with in this scenario. Would you like it to be you? Would you like it to be someone else? Who do you choose? I choose Rebecca. All right, so Rebecca, uh, you are going to be a private equity company. I am looking for funding. I have three minutes. All I know is that it's a media company and here we go. In three, two, one, ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hi, is this Rebecca? Yes, yes it is. Rebecca, thank you so much for taking my phone call. If I remember correctly, I believe you might have three minutes. Is that correct? Yeah, three, well, two minutes and 50 seconds now. Mm -hmm. right, well, Rebecca, you're counting. I'm going to have you off in two minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, first okay. and foremost, thank you again for being here. And I believe you have some idea of why we're on the phone. If, if I could just have one question in my two minutes and 20 seconds would be, why did you get into doing what you do? Why do you fund companies? Why does that matter to you? Why do you do this day in and day out? You know, it's all about making an impact in my community. 
And with the resources that I have, um, you know, why not? And I totally lied. I'm going to take a second question. Why community? Like, why does that even matter to you? Why isn't it just about the money? Um, I was just raised differently, just being in a small town in Louisiana. Um, it's always been about community. And that's just, that's my roots. Oh, well, you've come a long way from the small town of Louisiana, uh, based on the bio I've read online, Rebecca. And yeah. as you are in the world assessing, looking at companies, you get these phone calls day in and day out. And I have an idea of what you look for. And I'm also very confident that every human is different. I've, I've learned that through some of the investors I've already generated. So my question, Rebecca, is when you're assessing a company, when you're assessing a person, when you're assessing a mission, a mission, a purpose, what do you look for? What matters to Rebecca outside of impact? Um, impact is probably the greatest thing. Um, what are they doing? How are they contributing to the community? Um, how resourceful are they? How... Um, how diversified the companies are, that sort of thing. Yeah, well, Rebecca, in my last 60 seconds, uh, here's what I'll share to you. The media empire that I am responsible for growing, for driving, uh, is not only diversified, it comes with data and science on how we can bring uh, some much needed attention to some conversations, some people, some businesses that might not have all that attention. And I know this to be true at minimum. The one of the most efficient ways to create impact is to multiply a positive message. And at minimum, and only because I have 30 more seconds, that's what we're in the world to do. We're here to amplify the right integrous messaging. And we're only gonna do that through the partners like yourself. Now, I'm not looking for you to cut me a check today, but here would be my request, Rebecca. If you truly care about impact, if this matters for you, if I can back up my claims with proof, data, and science, would you at least be open to exploring, giving me 30 minutes where I can give you the financials, give you the specs, give you the leaderships, give you the vision. And if in 30 minutes, if I can't prove that to you and earn your trust, then there's no need for you to talk to me ever again. But if I do, maybe we can do a little more. Uh, is that something you'd be open to? Should I schedule that with you, an assistant? What would be the most efficient way, even if you want to do that, Rebecca? Um, you, can, I'll, you can schedule with my assistant. I'll give you 30 minutes. Okay. And is there a day that you prefer or does your sister handle all that? She handles it all. All right. And in fun energy, Rebecca, um, mm -hmm. when you're not saving the world and creating impact, just what do you do for fun and how do you enjoy yourself in a much tense environment? Um, I love music festivals and traveling. Um, my greatest enjoyment comes from crossing finish lines at different races and triathlons. Wow. Music festivals, triathlons. Uh, I might have to take five of my minutes to ask you about that. But for now, uh, I'm a little over time, so I will let you go. Anything I could answer in final, final for you, Rebecca? No, that's it. You're doing a great job out there. Thank you for making an impact on the community. Uh, well, God bless. Thank you for seeing me that way as we begin. And I hope to earn more and more of your trust as we continue. Have an incredible day, Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, DJ, uh, what say you? Like always, Fernando, uh, sharp from the beginning. Uh, you, you set it up properly, and you know you, you you talked about the time. Of course, you stay within that that time frame for the most part. And what I what I loved at the end is how you pounded the table on the on what the company what your company has achieved and the partnership that could be brought forth with Rebecca's. Uh, so I thought that was outstanding. Yeah, and. For everyone, uh, that was an example of how you vary your energies. We had fun, aspirational goddess. I had Zeus. I had enough questions and data. I didn't need more data because what mattered to me is what mattered to Rebecca. And if she wasn't the right person for me, there was no need to continue that conversation. And you could assess, do this quickly at speed, as we just demonstrated, when you know exactly how to do it. Um, so as we come to a close to have time integrity in our time today, uh, Quintus, uh, how is this second part of influence for you? And what is your final final? This, this has been amazing. Once again, Fernando, um, I, I'm, I'm super excited about this room, this collective, this group of, of, of people. Can't wait to touch bases with all of you. Uh, the ones that I don't know and have just met on today. Um, uh, and, and final final, this is the place to be. Um, this is the place to be. Shared experience, 
when you know with intention that you're looking to find a acceleration with someone else, you can't beat it. So I'm grateful. Well, thank you, Quintus. We'll take two more and then we'll end. Alan, as promised, let's kick it back to you. How was your experience on The Real Raw today, my friend? Well, definitely a, a little nervous, um, <laughs> for sure. Uh, but, but how was my experience in viewing all this today? Uh, yeah, this is um, it's rich. Very, very, very rich, and um, I, I can I can get used to this. Well, Alan, thank you, and I, I am present to your stoicism and the depth of your listening. And the most attractive part about you so far has been your humility, and uh, you don't see a lot of that when you put uh, groups of people together. It tends to be ego and significance, and uh, you, my friend, are the opposite. So, thank you for demonstrating that, Daryl. Uh, final, final. What say you in your infinite wisdom, sir? Uh, how was your experience and uh, anything top of heart as we take this home? Well, thank you, Fernando. Uh, <clears throat> I want to look back at a couple of notes that I wrote that uh, when you were speaking, yeah. one of the things you mentioned from the beginning was what's your why mm -hmm. when you were talking with Rebecca. And then you opened, you know, with your question and you complimented her. Um, you gave a benefit statement, you closed for the meeting. I like the alternative choice close that you provided because it doesn't matter, uh, you know, as long as you provide the alternative choice close, the client has to choose one. It doesn't really matter which one they choose because you've already provided what you need. And then you went into some personal information and closed again for the meeting. So all of that was great. As far as the meeting today, I think it's great what you guys are doing. Um, I kind of see this, I'm an old school guy as probably uh, the six degrees of separation on steroids. <laughs> so <laughs> basically you can get to anyone you really need to, um, but you also need to have the tools mm. once you, you know, do have the ability to get in front of that person or have that phone call with that person. And so I think it's just great training for someone who obviously has never had any uh, sales ability or you know sales training, because a lot of times when you do have those tools and the skill set, the client really they don't stand a chance because they don't know what it is that you're strategically doing in this conversation. So that's my assessment. But thank you, and it was great to meet you, Fernando. Well, Daryl, I am present to your intelligence and the depth of time you spent in your training. And as I end with everyone to anchor on what Daryl beautifully shared, the hardest thing to do in business is to gather an audience of incredible people. The second hardest thing is to convey, articulate, and discern value. And in order to do that, you need the superpower of influence. And sales is a component of influence. And this is not about, you know, a absolute technique. Uh, this is about a way of speaking, caring, and loving people. And I am present to all that is here. DJ, thank you for joining us again. Rebecca, incredible job. Your first heart of influence check. I honor you. Gene, great job. Quintus, you won the trophy. You filled the room. You, my friend, are a champion. On behalf of Unblinded, we thank you all. Craig B, incredible job. And we'll see you on the next shared experience. Ciao for now, everyone.